What's going on YouTube folks out there, Facebook friends, people of Black Junction TV. My name is Ademir and this is the Hard Black Truth. And as most of you may know, the Foundational Black American Convention Kickstarter has been suspended. And many of us are left undeterred because money's going to get to the creator of this, Tariq Nasheed. He, he's going to get his money. If, if anything, I believe that he will be even more emboldened at this point to have that Kickstarter or, or, or his convention fully funded at this point for the amount that he asked for anyway. But many of us are, are really sitting here pissed off because if you can't raise funds on Kickstarter, where the hell can you raise funds? And we seriously need these type of conventions to take place. Now, there, there have been some ADOS conventions and we no doubt appreciate that and we hope to see more of that. But this was sort of, I won't even say an off branch of that, it's more of the same thing, but it is being headed by a different individual, right? And immediately you had haters that came out. I will address that here shortly because it needs to be addressed. And clearly because of the haters, I suppose something somewhere along the line, folks decided that they were going to flag this, 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 Kickstarter and it really makes no sense. Black people, you're out there pocket counting somebody. You're, you're counting your homie's pocket, whether they're your homie or not. That's the part that really gets to me. You want to be mad because someone's out here raising funds for something that you don't necessarily believe in. That's fine. But you don't have the right to sit there and, and make sure that no one else can take part of that. Or at least do your damnness to make sure it's as difficult as possible to take part in. Right now, this is what we have out there representing us. Now, I don't know who Mila Dawn is. I've reviewed her Twitter. She, she isn't ugly, okay? She ain't a dime piece either. And when you see this kind of ridiculousness taking place at a revolt summit. Now, this is where they got Hollywood's uh, 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 brightest stars and entertainers to come together and talk about black empowerment, I suppose. No real direction, no real agenda. Um, if anything came out of that summit, it was completely overshadowed by this that you see on your screen. I mean, look, look at this woman's face. Look at her face. She, she got the stank face on like she pooping because she doing it. She doing it up. She twerking. She throwing it back at this man. Okay, great. Why is it that folks take these opportunities where we're supposed to be having a serious conversation? Black empowerment is never and, 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 and has never been a situation for you to turn up and party. We are in the lowest of the low. We're at the bottom uh, of the goddamn totem pole. We are a minority in a country of minorities. As far as the class system, we are at the lower tier. We don't have the time to be sitting here turning up. And it sickens me that they allow this to become a parody of what folks generally say about black people. They can't be serious for two minutes. The moment you get some folks in a room and you and you start talking about something serious, someone comes along and says, hey, look at me. I need some attention too. No, I ain't talking about nothing substantive, but look, I can twerk my ass. Look at me. So Tariq Nasheed, decided, you know what, I, I think I should do a revolt summit. He mentioned it once. He mentioned it twice. And the next thing you know, he has a commercial out. He still has a commercial out for those of you who want to see. I may have the link posted in the description. 
And you got a bunch of black folks just sitting there holding the American flag. And look, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to sit there and tell you straight up, man, when I saw all these black folks holding the American flag, I'm like, come on. But you know what? Sometimes you got to take a step back to realize that this ain't a game of checkers. This is this ain't a game of checkers. It, it's a little bit more complex than that. And once I realized that, I at that at this point I'm unbothered by that commercial. I'm unbothered by seeing the amount of black people toting up the American flag because you know what? There's a purpose behind it, and the purpose isn't to say, "Oh, vote Democrat next November." The purpose isn't to say, "Oh, vote Republican next November." The purpose isn't to say, "Oh, love this country and don't complain about racism and white supremacy." That isn't the purpose at all. See, we are so caught up with the with the we, we're so used to seeing black folks come along touting the American flag only to turn around and be outright coons that when we see that we are immediately taken aback by it. We're so used to seeing black Americans waving the flag and talking about all whites people ain't bad. We's our own worst enemies. We needs to get some integration and all that other crap. So when we see things like this, we, we, there's an automatic a, a mental reaction, right? The chemicals just start swirling the way they normally swirl. And, and, and before you know it, we're, we're just put off by that commercial. But when you sit back and think about it and you realize that these are black Americans honoring the flag and encouraging you to come down so that we can have a conversation about how we move forward and how we can achieve tangibles to empower ourselves and, and, and encourage reparations and just black empowerment in general. I mean, now he this this isn't my thing. This is Tariq Nasheed's thing, and he could describe it a whole lot better as far as the purpose goes. But I guarantee you that a foundational black American convention would be a whole lot better than this i can guarantee you that now Tariq came out asking for two hundred thousand dollars almost almost a quarter of a million dollars to host a convention okay now Folks saw that number and immediately went ape shit. He managed to raise 30 grand, just over 10%. Okay. He had over 25 more days to go. Less than 500 backers, ladies and gentlemen, less than five. This, this was just getting started. You understand me? This was just getting started. You're talking about Tariq Nasheed. This is a man that has 5,000 followers on any given social media network. And you have 449 people that paid out a sum of over $30,000. This was getting ready to be on some, some real heavy and serious uh, 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 shit right there. I didn't want to curse, but it came out. I'm sorry. And and you guys see it in the message. Now, for me, it's been about three and a half to four hours. By the time you see it, who, who the heck knows how long it'll have been. But they've decided to suspend it. And I suspect, I suspect that the reason for it are people like this Michi X. Now, I, I've come across Michi X's uh, posts before. And, you know, as of lately, I've been seeing a whole lot more of her on my timeline. P people have been posting her up. And I found myself wondering, you know, this 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 little light skinned lady, she be saying some 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 realness. I wonder why I haven't subscribed to her. And I went to her YouTube channel on more than one occasion, and I listened to one or two videos. Now, she does a lot of cussing, but, 
you know, it, she comes off as a, you know, keeping it a hundred kind of kind of feel she has going with it. But I refrain from hitting subscribe. And ladies and gentlemen, I tell you why. I don't automatically sign on to anybody anymore. There was once a time when I would do that. It's to the point now where I would rather see you or know about you on my social media and actually find out that you have a YouTube page for me to subscribe than for me to hear you say a couple of good things here and there in a video or two and then for me to decide to uh, subscribe. And the reason for that is because you never, when it comes to the, this whole pro-blackness things, th there's a lot of folks that will speak our language. They will use our words. They will sound just like us. But then you will hit up on a certain topic and then all of a sudden it, it's just like oil and vinegar, oil and water, how you, however you want to put it. It, it. All of a sudden we're just separated. Because you're just way out there with yours. And then all of a sudden you find out that, you know, despite all of these nice flowery things that they were talking about, they had an alternative agenda the entire time. Now, Tariq Nasheed found out about it and he immediately went into petty mode and, and began to roast her. And, and now you will know her as Lychee X. And I hate to say it, but... Even though this is a plain as day cabbage patch doll, you can't help but admire the resemblance. Okay? Because I see the resemblance. I know you guys see the resemblance too. Here. Here. There's definitely a resemblance there. So Tariq went in. He got petty. I don't know. If, I, I, I highly doubt that that was the... the, the straw that broke the camel's back and and you know that decided to whip out the trolls but it has come out since then that old lychee here gets along with crispy soto mayor okay so i stopped following tommy soto mayor a long time ago due mostly in part to jason black because jason black ain't want nothing to do with you if you were subscribed to any one of Tommy Sotomayor's uh, uh, many YouTube channels or, or Facebook channels, um, he would unfriend you. He would block you, straight up block you, okay? Because if he was going to get down with that kind of energy, you couldn't be in the same uh, 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 atmosphere, in the same area as with a Jason Black. We, we can't have the two together. Wouldn't, wouldn't work. And I know that some of you folks out there, you're still trying to play those both sides. You find out that it doesn't work because Tommy Sotomayor is far from a pro-black individual. And it strikes me as someone like a lychee here who's been talking all that fanciful talk. She still rocks with Tommy Sotomayor. She's an admin on his videos. Like she, she's in there, you know, uh, uh, deleting motherfuckers or chiming in with her own two uh, cents. Right? How do you get along with this dude? Clearly you guys are, are from the cut of the same cloth and clearly you are an outsider when it comes to this black empowerment thing. So you might call yourself keeping it a buck, keeping it 100 and you, you, you about your people or whatever, but truly you are not. Truly you are not. And old Lychee here, for all the trash that she had to say about Tariq Nasheed, all right, went in with the personal attacks, calling him moist and all of this other stuff, right? And talking about how he's out here pimping people like myself and, and some of you who may be considering to, to, to uh, add funds to the cause for Foundation of Black American uh, uh, Convention. Uh, she's saying that we, we are being pimped by this Tariq Nasheed. But then two videos later, She's out here talking about how she's having her own little convention and she's out here selling tickets. So let me get this straight. Let me get this straight. You're mad at this dude because he wants to raise $200,000 to have a convention. And because in your mind, and Tariq broke it down, but in your mind, Leechy, because you couldn't fathom 
being able to spend two hundred thousand dollars in one setting, because I, I, I guess that for you. $200,000 is something that would take you several years to accumulate. And this isn't me throwing shade. This is just me speaking literally from my point of view. Okay? Because when I heard $200,000, part of me, the broke part of me, said, God damn, that's a lot of money. Why all of that money? You understand what I'm saying? But then I have the black first part of me who has to take a step back and exercise some critical thinking. And ladies and gentlemen, did I not just get done doing a video about how the, the, the family of a Tatiana Jefferson uh, had raised over a quarter of a million dollars, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And we know that a large portion of that was going to go towards the funeral expenses, which was to be held at the Potter's house, which was to have Reverend Al Sharpton and uh, um, the one who I forget his name all of a sudden, uh, T.D. Jakes, they're speaking. Right. You have to pay for the venue. You have to pay for the speakers. You have to pay for the track, all of that stuff. All of that stuff comes into play. And ladies and gentlemen, this was for a funeral. Something that may have lasted five hours tops. Probably less than that. We're talking about an entire convention, which even if it was for one day, would be an all day event. You got to find the right venue. You got to make sure you have the, 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 the right amount of space. You got to make sure that you have room for vendors. Of course, you're going to if you're going to encourage black people to travel out someplace to hear people speak, you got to give people an opportunity to be able to 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 make some money. You understand what I'm saying? To be able to network a little bit. Right. You got to be able to pay for security. You got to be able to pay for insurance. You got to be able to pay for all kinds of things that come along with that. And if it's more than one day, you got to be able to pay for that too. And if you're going to have speakers, notable speakers there, I ain't just talking about a Al Sharpton and a TD Jakes, but some other more notable speakers, you're going to want to pay people for their time. This idea that folks are just doing everything for the love of, 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 of the Lord and whatever, that's, that's asinine and bullshit. Your own pastor don't even do it. Your own pastor that many of you go to church to every Sunday, you put money in the collection plate. They don't even do it for free. So why would you expect any speaker to go out to Atlanta to give a dissertation, to, to, to empower people, to, 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 to let people know how they can help themselves and do it for free? It makes no sense. Now, I'm not saying that you should bend over and get raped by an individual or because you're a star, you need to give me $50,000. I don't believe in that. But I understand that $200,000 at the end of the day is a drop in a bucket when it comes to the, 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 the whole picture of what needs to be taking place. Now, Kickstarter, they gave a, a, a reason as to, as to why they decided to suspend it. And they, they right here, after a thorough review of your project uncovered one one or more of the following violations and you can read it right there fundraising for a charity or a charitable purpose raising funds for personal expenses business expenses or equipment without creative intent does not fit into one of kickstarters categories or includes a prohibited item <sighs> A project description that does not clearly state what will be created and shared. Now, if you look at this, if you read this, and I had to read it for you, I could have let you read it, but I had to read it for you because I want you to know that as I read this, and as you heard me reading it, you're thinking to yourselves, right? Shit, that could be anything. That could be anything on Kickstarter right now. Yet Tariq Nasheed got singled out. So I'll just say this to all the trolls out there who have a problem with people who you think are making money hand over foot off of the plight of black Americans. 
if you don't appreciate it and you don't want to be involved, then don't be involved. But there are people that actually want to see this come to fruition. There are individuals that want to see this happen. I've given money to, to causes. I've paid for tickets to go to events and things don't necessarily pan out the way I thought they would have. I get that, ladies and gentlemen. I totally do. But I'm with Tariq on this. $200,000? Yeah, for the average black individual out here, that's something that would take anywhere between four to seven years to make. I understand. But at the end of the day, $200,000, when you're talking about having a convention uh, of the magnitude that he is described, $200,000 is barely enough to make sure that you're going to be able to go to Atlanta to connect with other individuals and do so in, in an environment that has been catered and is conducive to doing just that. Hands down, bottom line. So, to Michi X, young lady, old lady, whatever you want to go by, shame on you. I know that you feel that you're just keeping it 100. At least that's what you're going to tell yourself. I know that you feel that you're just keeping it real. I'm sure that's what you're going to tell yourself. But at the end of the day, this quote unquote hustle that you think Tariq Nasheed is trying to pull on black Americans is really no different from the shit that you're doing. You're out there guest hosting or guest starring or featuring in these little conventions where people pay to go. Tell me how is that different, Leechy? Oh, oh, they pay for their tickets in advance and, 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 and they're gonna listen to people speaking and, and they're gonna walk out with solutions. Really? You're sitting there talking shit about Tariq Nasheed and the things that he's done. But even in that video where she originally spoke about him, she admitted that oftentimes they would pop in a Hidden Colors DVD to have a conversation get started. So you admit on one hand that you rocks with the dude or the information that he puts out. But then you say on the other hand that he doesn't require $200,000 to do what he says he's going to do. But you pay, pay excuse me, charging people to, to, to pay for, for them to go out and see you and others speak is perfectly fine. Why? Because it's you? Because you have something different that you're going to say? You're going to give a solution that no one has ever given before? Oh, because you are up front with it. You've charged people up front. Okay, I get it, Leech. I get it. You're phony. You're a fraud. You associate with frauds. And it's been nice knowing you, but it's been nice knowing you. Peace.